What was the history of the world according to a bishop living in Spain in 625 AD? Let's have a look. Isidore of Seville was a bishop living in Spain and a very learned man who wrote a number of books, including a etymology, which is kind of a collection of all the knowledge of the world, as well as several history books. And now we're going to look at his timeline from the beginning of the world until his time. This book itself is more than 120 years old, but of course the text inside of it is 1500 years old. So it kind of just goes from one topic to the next. Um, and here we are, we're starting with time. And um, there are six kind of uh, time um, sequences. And what's super fascinating for me is the way he mixes um, biblical time and Greek and Roman mythology and actual historical events. So we're starting at year zero, not with uh, Jesus, but with Adam, uh, who, who gave birth to Seth when he was 130 years old. And then there's all the different people from the Old Testament. And then actually there's Noah at the end of the page and Arca Aidificatur, they built the ark. So let's see what happens next. Um, and then there was the flood. And then we're in the second age. So there's a bunch of more people from the Old Testament. But then here, Turis Aidificator, hoc tempore divisae sunt linguae et per orbem terrae facta est dispersio in Aidificatione Turis. Um, so they built the Tower of Babel, and that was the time when people were. Uh, split into different tribes and spoke different languages. Um, so that was an important event, obviously. Then uh, the Egyptian um, kingdom or whatever started, uh, the Assyrian uh, kingdom, the Zoroastrians discovered magic, apparently. Uh, and we're now in the Third Age. We've got Abraham, Isaac, again, Old Testament um, stuff. But... Um, the Hebrews are in servitude in Egypt, so I remember that from the Bible. Then there's Moses, and then the Hebrews find letters. So writing is invented, apparently. Um, and also, soon after, Catmus, who I don't know who is, gave letters to Greece, which was also a big deal. So moving forwards, we have the first um, fabulae fictae sunt. So I guess the first stories were made. And Apollo invented medicine. And let's see. Then in Greece, they invented a choir. And then they also invented Latin letters. So culture is really coming along. And then we get into the Trojan Wars. So Alexander steals Helen. And Troia is, is taken soon after. And... At the end here, just before Quarta Aitas, it says Homerus fuisse putatur. So we think that Homer lived at this time and wrote um, the Iliad and the Odyssey. So now we're over into the, the fourth age. And um, let's see what's interesting here. Lots of Old Testament stuff, prophets. Um, Carth Carthage is founded towards the end of the page here. They start the Olympic Games in Greece. That's a big one. Uh, Romulus is born. That was the, one of the founders of Rome, uh, the mythological founders of Rome. Let's see, moving forwards in time. Uh, Rome is founded, of course. Yeah, the Senate of Rome is founded. Um, let's see, the first, this first census. And Thales, uh, one of the ancient philosophers, is, is known, it says. Um, let's see, then we're going back into Greece, and we've got some Greek, uh, some Persian kings, Darius and Xerxes. We've got Soph Sophocles and Euripides writing tragedies. Um, Artaxerxes uh, is the Persian king, uh, Darius. So, and then, <laughs> I like this, Haik Aitas Habuit Platonum. So that time period had Plato. I know exactly why they um, formulated it that way. Uh, so then there, Demosthenes, Aristoteles were preaching, it says, and a bunch more um, Persian kings and, and children of kings. And then uh, 
Alexander the Great takes Jerusalem and he then takes Asia. And Ptolemaeus, his friend, um, takes over Egypt and is going to rule Egypt for 300 years. And let's moving forwards here. Uh, then the Romans take Greece. Um, Scipio takes Africa. Uh, Brutus takes Spain. Uh, Tra Tracus or Tra Tracus is uh, becomes Roman. Um, Syria becomes Roman. Ptolemaeus is born. I guess this is another Ptolemaeus. They invent rhetoric in Rome, um, or they start doing rhetoric. Uh, Cleopatra is born. And soon after, Egypt uh, is taken by Rome. We got Julius Caesar. And then that's the end of the fifth age. And we're starting the sixth age. And of course, that's a big deal because Christ is born. And I like kind of how, even though this is a book written in a religious time by a bishop, but yet, um, you know, Christus Nascitur here is no bigger. There's no big, <laughs> bigger deal than any of these other things. Um, so Christ is born, Tiberius is born, Christ is crucified, um, and then there's the Matthew, the, uh, what's it called in English, Evangelium of Matthew is written, and uh, then it's, I guess, published or shared. Then there's different emperors, um, and, uh, and the... And, the, the book of John and then there's a bunch of different emperors and the funny thing here is he's got basically one sentence for each emperor like one thing they did but some of them like Helios Pertinax here he's like nihil habet historiae like there's no stories about him um, and more emperors some you know Here's uh, Philippus is the first Christian emperor, and <laughs> but this guy Tacitus, yeah, he didn't do anything memorable. Um, someone wins over Persia. There's some synods, some Christian, some some uh, some church synods. There are some uh, church fathers. There are. Um, Different, uh, the Vandals take Africa. Um, Armenians become Christians. The Langobardians take Italy. The Goths convert to Catholicism. Uh, Rome falls to the Persians. And um, the, the Christians take Spain. Oh, sorry. Um, the Jews in, in Spain become Christian, um, which is interesting. And that's the last fact. And uh, then the last sentence here is, Residuum sextae aetatis tempus deo soli est cognitum. So the rest of the sixth, sixth age, only God knows. Of course, we also know, but uh, we come a bit later.